Good day, grade 5. Welcome to our science class. I am teacher Joey, your virtual teacher for today. Today class, we will travel to another lesson in science. I know and I am sure that you are all excited for another fun-filled learning activities for today. So let us now begin. But wait class, before we start our discussion, try to find a nice and comfortable place inside your home where you can focus with your lesson. I want you to prepare yourself as well as your materials necessary for your study. Kindly bring out your pen and paper so that you could jot down some important notes needed for your learning. Always remember class that having knowledge is having a power. Today class, you are going to learn about the stars. In your previous lesson, you've learned about weather disturbances. Wherein is a term used to describe a change in atmospheric conditions or weather patterns. You have also learned about the types of weather disturbances, kinds of tropical cyclone, different storm warning signals, and the effects of weather disturbances to people. Now class, imagine and look at the night sky. What do you see? When we look at the night sky, many of us are amazed at the beauty of the tiny lights we see hanging in the dark. If the sky is clear, you will see hundreds of stars. Almost all of the stars you can see are part of the large system of stars called the Milky Way galaxy. Did you know class that during ancient times, people used the stars as their point of reference when traveling? It is because there are stars that appear to be fixed in position throughout the year. At present, stars play an important role in the field of astronomy. They are used as guides in determining the distance of planets and the locations of heavenly bodies. So at the end of this lesson, you will be able to learn the characteristics of stars and classify stars according to their size, brightness, color, and temperature. On a clear night sky far from city lights, you can see a bright sky. Billions of stars are in the sky. But they are too far to see, right? Some stars are farther away that our eyes cannot see them. Some stars are bright and some are faint. As you see the stars, you will see the stars vary in color. But my question now is, what is a star and what makes it up? Stars are hot ball of glowing gases. Huge celestial bodies made of gases and can produce light and heat through nuclear fusion inside their cores. A star is born in a low density of dust and gas called nebula. Stars also are the building blocks of galaxies, of which there are billions in the universe. It is important to know how many stars exist, but through the help of astronomers, they estimate that in our Milky Way galaxy alone, there are about 300 billions of stars. Stars are so far away that distances between them are measured in light years. A light year is the distance traveled by light in one year. A light year is equal to 9.5 trillion kilometers. Take note of this that the sun is the closest star to us. And the closest known star outside of our solar system is Alpha Centauri which is over four light years away. Many stars that you see in the sky as mere points of light are millions of light years away. Stars vary in size, apparent brightness, color, and temperature. Let's proceed first to stars differ in size. Stars measured in diameters. A diameter is a straight line that cuts a circle passing through the center point. The smallest known star has a diameter of about 20 kilometers. The Canis Major 
of the largest known stars has a diameter of 1,975 billion kilometers. This is more than 100 times than the size of our sun. Some stars are so large yet the naked eye cannot see them because they are too far away. This time let us classify the stars according to their size. The first one is supergiants. They are the largest stars. Examples are Antares and Betelgeuse. Antares has a diameter that is 330 times than of the Sun. And Betelgeuse has a diameter of 375 to 595 times that of the Sun. Number 2, Giants. They have diameters that are about 10 to 100 times larger than the Sun's. Aldebaran has a diameter that is 36 times than of the Sun. Number 3 size of stars is medium sized stars. They are the big as the Sun. Other stars in this group are Altair, Sirius, and Rigel. And number 4 size of the star is white dwarf. That is dwarf, not drafts. They are the small stars. The smallest dwarf is Van Maanim's star. It has a diameter of 8,370 km less than the distance across Asia. And the last one size of the star is the neutron star. They are the tiniest stars. Their mass is less than that of the sun but it's so compact. Their diameter is about 20 km. Stars also differ in color and temperature. Stars may be blue, white, yellow, orange, or red. Stars differ in color because of their different temperatures. Like the flame, stars with high temperatures are blue or bluish white. On the other hand, red stars have lower temperature. Yellow and orange stars have medium temperatures. So based on this diagram, or in this table so as you can see in the table bluish white white to blue white has this high temperature so the stars with high temperature is Rigel Cyrus and Sun while the coldest temperature is Arctus and Antares so that's the color. So nagdidepende ang temperature based on their color. Stars also differ in brightness. Magnitude measures the brightness of a star or other celestial body. The brighter the object, the lower the number assigned as a magnitude. The magnitude of a star refers to how bright it looks to our eyes. The magnitude of a star is determined by its size, temperature, and distance from Earth. Magnitude is given in terms of absolute and apparent values. Let's proceed first to the first one which is the absolute magnitude or absolute brightness. It is a measurement of how bright a star would appear if viewed at equal distance with other star. It also known as a star's luminosity. Its luminosity measures the total amount of light energy emitted by a star. The sun's absolute magnitude is 4.8. The brightest known stars have absolute magnitudes about negative 9 and the dimmest known stars have absolute magnitudes of about 20. Let's now proceed to the, abs the, to the apparent magnitude or apparent brightness. It measures how bright a star appears from the Earth. The apparent brightness of the stars depends on their distance from the Earth. Stars that appear bigger and brighter are those that are closer to the Earth. So let's now proceed on how our stars form and change. So the first one is that stars form in nebula which are clouds of gas and dust, nuclear reactions in the center or core 
of stars generate enough energy to keep them shining brightly for many. So that nuclear reactions class is composed of hydrogen atoms kaya ito yung dahilan bakit nakikita natin sila as starlight in the during at night. The exact lifetime of a star is highly dependent on its size. Large massive stars burn their fuel much faster than smaller stars and they may only live for a few hundred thousand years. Smaller stars on the other hand will last for a billions of years because their fuel burns much more slowly. So ibig sabihin yung mga mas malaking stars sila yung maliliit ang or may iksi ang kanilang buhay. Samantalang ang maliliit na stars sila yung may mahahaba ang buhay. Next! However, the hydrogen fuel that powers the nuclear reactions within stars will eventually run out and the stars will enter the final phase of their lives. This is now what you call that it turns to red giant. So they will expand cool and change cooler over time to become red giants. The path they take after that is determined by the mass of the star. Number three stage is that turns to white dwarf. Small stars such as the sun will die in a relatively peaceful and beautiful manner, passing through a planetary nebula phase to become a white dwarf, which eventually cools down and stops glowing to become a black dwarf. Number four step is that the massive stars, on the other hand, will die in a most energetic and violent manner, with their remains scattered throughout the cosmos in an enormous explosion known as supernova. So after that massive stars die, the explosion called the supernova. And then the fifth stage is that when the dust settles, the only thing left is a very dense star known as a neutron star. These are known as pulsars because they are frequently rapidly spinning. And the last stage is that if the exploding star is massive enough, it may even form a black hole. So with this class, what is the importance of the stars? So, stars are important for navigators. They tell directions and give light at night. We should appreciate and show our gratitude to God for these heavenly bodies. And with that class, I am sure that you are now ready to take our examination. All you have to do is to read each item carefully, choose the letter of the correct answer.